throughout my journeys in the backcountry, I've grown to enjoy having wax cotton or oil cloth as my outer layer. Clothing for the outdoors is a pretty individualistic topic. What works for one person may not work all too well for the next, but for me, I've really enjoyed having wax cotton as my outer layer. I've had to patch some rips and tears in these pants. One of the knee patches is ripping on one side, but despite that, I still believe I'll be able to get at least another year out of this pair. While I do enjoy wearing waxed pants, they're definitely not for everyone. Contrary to popular belief, they are not waterproof, more so water resistant, I'd say. Meaning that if you're in a light rain or walking through bush that's just slightly damp, most of that water is going to shed off and they'll keep you dry. But if you're in a heavy downpour or walking through tall brush that's soaking wet, the water's going to make its way through the material simply for the fact that cotton will stretch when it's being pulled from the motions of walking. When you're walking, the material is going to pull and the material is going to stretch, which is going to allow little air gaps to form between the woven material. Whenever you have air gaps in the material, water is going to find its way through. Waxed pants also don't breathe very well, so if you are in hot weather or going on a really hard hike, they're going to make you quite hot. You obviously can't wash wax pants with soap and water or else you'll wash all the wax out of them. These pants that I'm wearing here have never been washed. I've had them for, I guess, two and a half-ish years now. Never been washed once. And I know that that aspect of wax pants will definitely turn some people away from them. So why do I wear them? Well, they are water resistant, so they do help to keep me dry. They do especially well in the winter, dealing with the snow. The snow just sloughs right off them, so whenever the temperatures are below zero, I never really have to worry about getting wet. They do a really good job of blocking out the wind, which means in the colder months of the year, they make my insulating layers that much more effective at keeping me warm. When it comes to the summer or the warmer months of the year, insects can't bite through this material, so my legs stay protected from biting insects like mosquitoes or midges. They also protect me from plants like thistles or wild roses. Walking through this northern wilderness, it seems like everything wants to poke me. But these pants, the material is so thick that those thistles or thorns can't make their way through and my legs stay protected. Since this material isn't synthetic, they actually do really well around campfires dealing with sparks and embers. I get asked a lot about whether or not this material is flammable. People think that it, as soon as it's exposed to a flame or sparks or embers, it's just going to go up in flames. but. That really hasn't been the case, at least for me. I find that they deal really well with the sparks. I've never even got a single burn hole in these pants. Even my large wax cotton tarp that I made a few years back, it's been set up next to some pretty intense fires and I think I've only ever got one burn hole in it. I won't go into details to why I think that is, but compared to a synthetic material, these pants stand up really, really well around campfires. So those are the major advantages and disadvantages of wax pants or oilcloth pants. I'll let you decide as to whether or not they're suitable for you. To begin this project, the materials list is pretty simple. A pair of pants and some wax. When I made my first pair of these wax pants about four and a half years ago, I went to the store and bought a pair of 100% cotton pants for $20. And then two years after that, to make this pair, went to the store and bought the same pair of pants for $30. This time around, went to the store and they were asking $40 for one pair of pants. So I decided to go to a secondhand store and I ended up buying this pair of pants for $7. These pants are 100% cotton. I'd recommend getting 100% cotton. Some pants will have 1 or 2% synthetic material in them to add some elasticity or stretch to the pants, but the stretchier your material is, the less water resistant it's gonna be. So for that reason, I'd recommend just getting 100% cotton. I'd also recommend buying pants that are a little oversized if you plan to wear them in the winter. That way you'll be able to fit insulating layers underneath of them. Over the years, I've experimented with a lot of different wax and oil mixtures, but I always end up coming back to this same wax mixture, which is seven parts paraffin wax and one part beeswax measured out by weight. I measure the wax out, melt it together in a pot over a nice low heat, mix it together to make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and then I pour it off into small paper muffin wrappers, which gives me a bunch of small wax pucks to use for projects like this. I prefer this 7 to 1 mixture because it has a high enough melting point that it doesn't get that wet, sticky feeling in hot weather, but it's soft enough that it doesn't become brittle and crack, even in extremely cold weather. Now in addition to pants and wax, if you want to add knee reinforcements like I'll be doing, then you'll need some material for the reinforcements, I prefer to use buckskin, and you'll also need some needles and thread to sew them on. The waxing process is very simple, I take a solid puck and rub it into the material, then use a pot filled with boiling water to melt it in. There are many different ways to apply wax to material. I believe this is the simplest method, and it also results in little to no wax going to waste. A lot of people try to brush on melted wax, 
but that can get real messy and result in uneven coats of wax and quite often it ends up wasting a lot of the wax too. So for simplicity reasons, this is my preferred method and the method I wanted to share. I think everyone can rub a block of wax on some material and use a pot as a makeshift clothing iron to melt it in. The waxing process is the most time consuming. It's not difficult to do, it just takes a little time. To fully saturate the material with wax, I typically have to apply two or three coats, meaning I apply the wax, melt it in, apply another coat, melt it in, and sometimes apply a third coat and melt it in. And then the material is fully saturated, fully waxed, and that's what you're aiming for, is for the material to be fully saturated with wax. So you can see the difference here between the unwaxed material, the material after the first coat of wax, and the material after two or three coats when it's fully saturated. It should be noted that the color or darkness of the material will change after it's waxed, so be aware of that. If you want to know what the material will look like after it's waxed, simply wet it with some water and that will give you a good idea of the color it will be once it's fully waxed. So that is the waxing process, applying wax by hand, then melting it in with a heat source. You can easily do this with heat from a campfire or some other heat source, but again, I think this method can be replicated by pretty much anyone. I wax everything real thoroughly. All the seams, the back pockets, the waistband, the belt loops, everything gets waxed. The only thing I avoid waxing is the front pockets, the thin liners, I don't wax those, but everything else gets a good thorough waxing. Once the pants are waxed, they are field ready at this point. My first pair of wax pants I made I didn't add knee reinforcements to and I still got over two years out of them. They will be pretty stiff and maybe even a little uncomfortable at first, but once they get broken in they soften up and are quite enjoyable to wear, at least in my opinion. I really appreciated having the reinforced knees on this current pair of pants that I have, so I'm going to go ahead and add knee reinforcements to this new pair as well. When adding these knee patches, the first thing that needs to be done is figuring out where the top and the bottom position of these knee patches need to be. The easiest way to do this is to put the pair of pants on, take a pencil and mark out the top and the bottom of the knee patch. It's important to keep in mind that when your legs bend, your pant legs move. So when you kneel down, typically your pants are gonna move up a little bit. So you wanna make sure the bottom of your patch is far enough down on your shin that when you bend down, your entire knee stays protected. If you just mark out your knee, when you bend down, the pants may slide up and part of your knee may not actually be protected by the knee patch. I like to position the bottom of the knee patch further down on my shin so that when I bend down, my entire knee stays protected. Once you pencil in the rough location of the knee patches, you can take a measurement from the bottom of the pant leg up to the bottom and top lines you marked out, then transfer them onto the other leg. This will get the knee patches pretty close to being in the same position on both legs. Once the position of your knee patches is marked out, now we need to draw up a pattern. This doesn't have to be complicated at all. Begin with a sheet of paper large enough to cover the knee patch area. The top edge of the paper should be nice and straight. You can make these knee patches any shape or size or position you want. I prefer just a straight across patch, so that's what I'm going to do. I line up the straight edge of my paper with my topmost pencil mark, making sure it looks straight and positioned the way I want. I then hold the paper in place while folding up the bottom side of the paper. I carefully roll the paper down towards my bottom pencil mark, then fold the paper where I want that bottom edge of my patch to be.
I mark the fold line with my pencil, then move on to tracing out the sides of the pattern. Rather than trying to stitch through the seams of the pants, I prefer to make my pattern to the inside of them, that way I don't have to force my needle through all that extra fabric. So feeling with my finger, I trace out the inside edge of both sides of the pant legs. And as simple as that, the pattern is traced out. After cutting it out, I place it back on the pants in the marked position just to ensure that the pattern will fit. If adjustments need to be made, they certainly can, but this pattern looks just about perfect, so now it's time to make the knee patches. I transfer the pattern onto the deerskin material, then simply cut them out. The knee reinforcements can be made from any material you desire, a thick canvas material would certainly work well, then could also be waxed the same way the pants were. Once the patches are cut out, I lay them on the pants to once again check just to make sure they're going to fit properly. Since this buckskin can be difficult to push a needle through, I'm going to punch holes before I begin sewing. In my current pair of wax pants, I stitched the knee patches on with a very close stitching pattern. This ended up not being the most ideal because on one of the patches, a whole side ripped open due to the stitching holes being too close together. So for this new pair of pants, I'm going to stagger the stitching holes in an attempt to avoid that issue happening again. I made up a little template to mark out my stitching holes just to speed up the process rather than measuring out each one individually. Now it's time to begin sewing. The first step is to pin out the knee patch so that it remains in the correct position while I'm sewing. I simply use a few extra needles for this. For thread I'm using nylon dental floss. It's a strong thread that's readily available and it's quite inexpensive. I'm going to stitch one side at a time, going from corner to corner. This way the knots for the beginning and end of each stitch will end up being in the corners of the patch, preventing me from ever kneeling on them. It can be a little tricky stitching from the inside of the pants, but once you get a feel for it, it becomes less awkward. I secure the first stitch by tying a slip knot and cinching it down on the inside of the pants so that there's no visible knots on the outside. I then run whip stitches through the knee patch to secure it. Once the stitch is complete, I tie it off, trim the thread, and move on to the next side of the patch. I should note, 
for this bottom side of the knee patches, you want to leave a small gap in the stitching. This is to allow any grit, debris, pebbles, anything that could find its way under the knee patch. This gap will give you a place to get that stuff out. On my existing pair of pants, I did the same thing just to make sure small objects that are uncomfortable to kneel on don't get trapped inside the pants. Creating this opening is very simple. Rather than stitching through the patch and the pants, just carry your stitches through the patch material until you're past the gap, then go back to stitching through both layers. The rest of the patch, stitch it normally until all the sides are stitched. Follow the exact same process for the second knee and then the pants are basically done. One extra step I like to take is to oil the leather to keep it conditioned to make it more water resistant. To do this I simply apply lard to the leather. I use lard to condition all my leather goods, including my boots, and it's been working out pretty good for me. Really any rendered animal fat will do, but lard is just cheap and readily available. It will also darken the color of the leather a little bit, which may be more appealing to some versus the light buckskin color. So there you have it, a completed pair of wax pants. Some may want to know how much wax it took to complete these. I used four and a half of those wax pucks. and. On average they weigh about 40 to 45 grams, so I'll just say it was 5 wax pucks. We'll say each one weighed 50 grams, so about 250 grams of wax went into finishing these pants. Honestly, not a hard process at all. It may seem like a lot of work if you sit down and try and do it all in one go, but if you just work on them a little in the evenings as you're unwinding, relaxing, by the end of the week you're going to have a nice product, a good tough pair of pants that are going to serve you for quite a few years to come. This pair that I've got on right now, I've had for about two and a half years or so, and I honestly think I can get another year at least out of them, so pretty good return for the time spent making them. When it comes to maintaining wax pants, they're very easy to take care of. Like I said, you can't wash them with soap and water. If you do find that they become heavily soiled or too dirty for your liking, you can take a cloth, get it wet with some cold water, just wipe the areas clean, get as much of that surface dirt off as you can, then just re-wax the area, melt the wax in. If you get any rips or tears, those can be sewn up. Uh, next time that I have to repair a pair of these, I'm gonna film the process and show you guys how to properly apply a patch or repair a hole. I've never had my pants smell bad from bacteria or sweat or anything like that. These pants just smell like they've spent a lot of time around campfires. I've heard people have success with freezing them for long periods of time and that will kill the bacteria, but I can't testify to that at all because I've never had that issue. But if you spend a lot of time around campfires, they're probably just going to smell like they've been smoked. So there is the process I follow to make a pair of wax pants. You can buy wax pants for three to four hundred dollars, or you can turn a seven dollar pair of pants into something that will last for years to come. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, God bless and happy trails.